Here's an example for you to try. Put the video on pause, take a few minutes, work this problem, and then come back to this screen and we'll look at the answer. Okay, hopefully you chose to do factor by grouping because we have an expression with four terms. So splitting this problem in half, I pair up the first two terms and a GCF is 2x and in parentheses I have x plus 5. From the second set of, of terms, the last pair, I have pulled out as a GCF a negative 3 so that in parentheses I can get an x plus 5 to match with this x plus 5 and then we're ready to write the answer. x plus 5 is our first factor, 2x minus 3 is the second factor. Uh, maybe this is an interesting time to point out this idea that of these two factors it never matters the order that we have them. So if your answer is written with 2x minus 3 as your first factor and x plus 5 as the second factor, that's 100% acceptable. Why? It's because these are two terms that are getting multiplied. Right in between these two terms there's a multiplication. And multiplication is an operation that you can do in any order. 3 times 7 is always going to equal 7 times 3. 2 times 9 is always 9 times 2. So the fact that these are two terms that are getting multiplied means they can be in any order. Either factor can be first. When I say x plus 5 is the first factor, that's just because it's written first here, not because it has to be written first. Either order. Okay, here's another example. Four terms, so it's going to be factor by grouping. This has, well, a little of an interesting twist to it, so we'll just see what happens. We'll split this problem in half, and from the first pair, we're looking for the GCF. We can't do too much with a 2 and a 3 as these coefficients, so the best we can do is just take 1x from each term. So we have 1x in front of parentheses. Left over inside, we'll have 2x plus 3. Okay, this second pair, the positive 2x plus 3, thinking about a GCF, there isn't one. We can Again, we can't divide anything evenly from 2 and 3, and when it comes to the variables, we don't have a variable in this last term, so we're not able to take a variable from both terms. So we don't really have a GCF, so I'm just going to put those terms, the 2x plus 3, in parentheses. We're going to see that we do have, in parentheses, those quantities match, 2x plus 3 and 2x plus 3 match, and it goes out front. Hopefully you're catching on to this idea that if we're taking a factor away and it looks like we're not leaving anything behind, there really still is a 1 as a factor left behind. So in this set of parentheses, we need to have x plus 1. This plus 1 is, of course, absolutely important. So the 2x plus 3 match one factor. Our second factor is made up of leftovers. And if we don't see a leftover, we know there's a 1. One thing that you could do at this stage right here where we're thinking about what is the GCF and we don't see one, for some people it's helpful to just put a 1 out in front. There, and again, if it's helpful, we do it. So if you get to this situation and you feel like this is something that could be helpful for you, when we look at this back pair and we don't see a GCF, let's just put a 1 out front because it's helpful it's helping us to remember that there needs to be a 1 showing up in our factor down here. So when we put a 1 there, you can see we've got the 2x plus 3, and the leftovers are x and a positive 1, so we have x plus 1. 